Hey, JP. Justin, how are you? Doing well, man. How you doing? Doing well. Jason's Jason's spoken very highly of you, right? Oh well, uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. He's, he's a good guy. Was, uh, I've enjoyed. We got to know each other a little bit uh, maybe six months ago, and uh, oh, excellent. He's been uh, he's been a good guy to know. So cool. Yeah, thanks said, for having me. I appreciate it. He said you were the better fill-in for this, anyway. So I figured. I mean, I, I asked can't the best, and I said just not you, just not him. <laughs> so he said, "Okay, I have to find somebody." <laughs> You know, I he does a good job talking, but you know, I'll do I'll do the best I can. How long have you been over there? Uh, I've been there since uh, 2012, so nine years. Wow. Hey, Pete. Hey, how you doing? Doing great. Good. You, you Hi, Pete. Pete. Nice Pete. to meet. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. So, good to meet uh, you. Pete, JP is uh, uh, exec over at uh, Thunder Tech. Oh, nice. I've been there for, for what you said, nine years now. So nine years. Wow. Yeah. How's we've been each other for about 25 <laughs> in all different <laughs> business and personal. <laughs> yeah. yeah biz business is, uh, is good. It's good. Yeah. You know, a lot of folks, uh, uh found, uh, digital religion during the pandemic. So, <laughs> you know, Look, I gotta be digital. I gotta be digital. That's right. That's right. Um, a lot of those stories kind of came out, you know, um, but yeah, it's 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 good. A lot, a lot of um, I wouldn't say it's it's pent up demand just yet, but you know, it's it's strong and stable with a lot of opportunities out there. So we're we're very fortunate. Good. So we have one more panelist, uh, Dr. Albert Green. He and I worked together. He was a CEO of Kent Displays when I was over there, and he has his own consulting business. So he's. He's got an interesting perspective. He's um, a PhD scientist, uh, worked for sort of in the government developmental tech world for a while, and then became a CEO from there. So it's a little bit of a, an interesting background. He's Absolutely. Both, both sides of the world. So I thought it'd be good to get this conversation today. So. Cool. That's great. Yeah. yeah. What, a, what a strange way to get in the business. It, yeah. It's a very, um, it's sort of just the right fit at the right time and the CEO role came open with the company had been working with a little bit and they said, uh, you know, you're a good fit because we're a science company based company. So he took it. So yeah, it's good, cool. good guy, smart, very different perspective on things. We'll let him do all the talking. That's true. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to, okay. I'm ready to just sit back. That's right. Uh, let the smart guy lead. <laughs> there we go. There he is. I was just saying we're going to let the smart guy talk today, so we're all just going to sit back and listen to you for 45 minutes. Right. <laughs> it's, it's the end of the day. And, and I had an in-person meeting, so. Wow. I got an in-person <laughs> meeting today, too. I actually had to drive somewhere and meet, so. So, guys, I, I appreciate you doing this. We'll get started here in a minute. Um, the This is going to be, well, it's being recorded currently, and it'll be posted on our um, AMA site. And we, if they're, the panelists and people that are joining won't, uh, the way this will work is they won't show up uh, as far as um, video or, or um, uh, stuff because it's a closed circuit, but they'll, uh, as they come on, they'll be able to, to see and hear us. But then really the, the big part is this will be posted um, following this on our site and hopefully picked up and worked. If you need this for any reason for your own purposes, would like it for your own purposes, we can get you guys get you guys copies of this as right. well right um so we'll give it a couple minutes and then we'll get started here um <clears throat> al i like your i like your air show photos in the background oh, thank you that was my that was my my job out of college i worked for the cleveland national air show oh uh, did you that's where those were taken yeah but it yeah. was probably oh goodness that's got to be almost 15 years ago um but I'm not a, a an aviator. I'm a photographer, and so ah, those are those are hard pictures to get. Yeah, you know. Yeah, are I was. Still, uh, are you oh, still sorry. doing photography? Sorry, are you still doing photography? Oh yeah, I, I did. It is my my passion. I've been. I started it forty some years ago, and oh, that's great with the whole film <laughs> cameras, and now I'm I'm you know just getting into mirrorless, and I'm a Nikon guy. I probably have. 10 cameras. 
Yeah, there's a wow. buddy of mine I worked with at the ad agency. His name's Matt Green. And he was account guy. Then he was a brand manager at a few different places. And he spun off and started his own studio. I think he's down in Hudson. And just look oh, him up Oh, online. wait, what's his name? What's his name? Matt Green, Matt Green. Oh, no, maybe I don't know him. He, he does a whole bunch of portrait work. Mm -hmm. And you just got to look at his site. Every once in a while, he'll, it's he'll really hit, tough. hit on something. I mean, that's just amazing. It would be tough to have a profession. Um, to, to be a photographer profession now is just yeah. almost impossible because of the proliferation of, you know, pretty high quality, you know, portable high camera. Quality. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, you know. So, hey guys, we'll uh, let's get started here. I think we're a couple minutes in. We'll try and go about, I, I would say, 35 to 45 minutes if we we'll, if we can get through uh, that. May go a little longer, maybe a little bit shorter. There's no set time here, but we'll we'll get started. Um, first of all, I just want to thank everybody um, on behalf of the American Marketing Association from Northeast Ohio. Um, Al, I was telling these guys, you know, this is being recorded. We'll post this on to our AMA site, and it's a resource. Um, and the AMA, and I'll just talk a little bit about what we're doing so everybody's got some background, but every month now the AMA is putting out a topic of the month and that everything we do in that month is being aligned with that particular topic. We have video blogs, uh, live events like we've, we've done here today, and then we also are doing reposting of articles that are tied to it. Uh, we do a recent graduate's perspective on that topic of the month. So we do a lot around the, for the AMA around topics of the month. And this, this, this month being marketing roles in, in modern, modern business. And uh, so we really appreciate you guys taking some time to talk about it. I think it'll be fun. And uh, we'll ask a couple questions. Feel free to chime in, add value, throw out questions to each other. There's no, uh, no real formula here today other than let's get some good knowledge for the people listening to us. So I'm going to start with this. Um, and JP, maybe we'll start with you. Just a quick introduction yourself, uh, company you work for, how long you've been there, a little bit about your role in, the, in that business. Yeah, absolutely. Um, JP Cranes, um, Director of Account Services at ThunderTech. Um, we're an integrated marketing agency. Um, and uh, we, we deal mainly with um, um, clients in the um, upper to middle market. And um, you know, working with um, uh, digital and traditional means um, to get to get work done. So, um, I've been an agency for 16 years. Um, so, seen a lot. Um, um, definitely saw a lot of changes um, over that time period, as well as in 2020, which I'm sure everyone here on this call has um, done the same. But thanks for having me, Pete. Yeah, thanks. I'm uh, Pete Winzig. I'm the chief idea officer and owner of a firm called Ignition Idea Group. I've been in the business for 35 plus years. Uh, started at a traditional ad agency, moved around the country. I uh, had a firm in uh, Boston, Buffalo, and ended up in Cleveland. Worked on huge Fortune 500 brands all across the country. Was there for 20 years and then transitioned to our, our house furniture as their national director of marketing. Then I was at a law firm and ran a firm operation of about a dozen people and 1500 employees. And then hung it all up, decided to be a uh, bit of an innovator, start working from home before there was COVID and <laughs> launched an agency. And I have a network of providers that I use all throughout the community to um, help my clients. Awesome, thank you. Dr. Albert Green. Hi, pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me, Justin. Uh, I'm Albert Green. Um, I currently am the CEO of AMG Consulting Group, uh, a consulting uh, firm that I stood up that's really around technology commercialization and helping organizations optimize their innovation, ass innovation assets. Prior to that, uh, I was CEO of a company called Kent Displays. Uh, that's how I met Justin um, and ran Kent Displays from 2007 to 2018, uh, launched a line of consumer products that we sold under our brand called Boogie Board. So e-writer technology. And then prior to that, I uh, worked in, in uh, national capital regions, the Washington DC area, at a large technical services company called Science Applications International Corporation or SAIC. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Uh, 
you know, I, I think it's really interesting. The backgrounds are very varied. And I have a feeling uh, while we all have different perspectives on marketing roles and whatever you call marketing today, um, I would bet a lot of the things that we've encountered uh, probably align pretty well, even though we've been in a lot of different industries and, and categories. Um, and so I'll start with um, the question, and, and we've all been at least a few years, and I, I could have said, you know, what's changed in the past 16 months, much less, JP, 16 years since you've been in this. Um, but, you know, looking back over our careers, um, just to maybe comment a little bit about what's changed in the last five to 10 years from a marketing perspective. And I'll, let's start with you, because you you sort of come from two different angles. Um, you know, you, you've come from the government scientific side to jumping over into the, the world of, of business. Um, and so I think you've got a sort of a unique perspective on that. But how, how have you seen things, even maybe from when you first got into it till now and what you're doing now? Um, just a quick quick blurb on what you've seen change in the last five to 10 years. Yeah, so I would probably say um, you all collectively have forgotten <laughs> more than, I, than I've learned about, about marketing, hearing your very impressive uh, resumes and backgrounds. You know, I very much learned um, what I, the small amount that I learned in marketing kind of on the fly. I learned it from being a CEO of a company that started out when I joined of a few people and, and when I left 12 years later had, had over 100, uh, about 108. And, you know, worked, you know, when I got first got there, you know, it was a tech company that, that, you know, was trying to commercialize some interesting technologies, but it was around licensing and so on, um, you know, barely could pronounce marketing. And then when I left marketing was probably the biggest department uh, next to, and next to, to manufacturing uh, in the company. So I learned a lot of stuff, but again, a lot of it was, was learning um, just experientially based, and and um, you know, to me, the thing that's 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 exciting now is um, the it's it's this ability to really go point to point marketing. I mean, where you know you can basically laser focus on a particular customer with a particular kind of characteristics, and and how that you know, really changes your ability to target and to sell. Uh, we were in consumer products. That's one thing. I think the thing that's going to be interesting to see what happens is, um, you know, COVID in my mind has changed everything. Um, and, um, you know, there are huge efficiencies that I've experienced. And I think from an industry perspective, people experience because of the form that we're using to communicate right now. I mean, a lot of the people that I've that I that are my customers, I've never met. I mean, there's only one person on this call, Justin, who I've known for a long time. But this is kind of the norm, and it's okay. And the question is going to be, how do you leverage those efficiencies and those and those and and the cost of gains uh, to evolve the marketing activity even further? So those are a few thoughts. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, Yell. You and I have talked in the past. We used to joke around the fact that we're not doing the Super Bowl ads, right? And yeah, right. <laughs> back in the day, I mean, I, I remember I, I was running a, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of business, and it was about reach and, and reaching just as many people as you could. And you had profiles and demographics and, you know, certainly things, but it was about, about mass reach. And the world has almost flipped in that regard because it, it now is, to your point, point to point. And you now wanted to go more narrow and go more specific and more, more interaction, more connection. Um, so it, in, a, in a weird way, it's literally flip-flop to reach everybody in America if you can just to, to get exposure to, forget about the exposure, figure out who wants your stuff, right? And, and, that, and in some sense, you could say it levels the playing field. And in another sense, it doesn't, you, you know, um, because that also takes resources. But, but yeah, it's it levels the playing field, I think, in 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 many ways, because even a small company can afford to, if they're smart about it, to really laser in on who their specific customer uh, is and micro market. You probably see this all the time in, in the digital world, as much stuff as you guys do on the digital side, with uh, you know all the, the all the new marketing tactics, so, you know. 15 years ago, that didn't exist. You know, 15 years ago, it was, you know, again, it was about mass reach. So just in your world, how's things changed in the agency side? I, yeah, I mean, uh, account-based marketing, right? This, this, I think, is, is, and Albert kind of touched on that a little bit, is 
the, the big component of this is that we're asking our directors of marketing now to be sort of data scientists, right? Mm -hmm. they, they've got to, you know, clean the data and get a CRM system. And then by the way, develop a process around that and then make sure that the process is onboarded effectively and, you know, um, make sure that when they send those emails out or they grab those pixels, what is the information that's coming in? What is the conversion points? What does add one, two, three, four, five down that journey look like? And I would say even five, no, let's, let's just say five to seven years ago, I don't know if that was top of mind for your traditional marketer, right? It's advertising, it's get where you, you need to be. Maybe it's on Google in that paid environment. Um, but now you're asking that, that, that marketer to really start to put on that, that data scientist hat and, and say like, okay, you're getting all these visitors to the site. Who's good? Who's bad? Right. And, and you know, that, that's just the new norm. And by the way, you got to hire for that person that knows traditional advertising, digital advertising, how to, you know, get the account-based marketing set up in house. I, I it, it's, it's definitely a utility player in that, in that director marketing role. Yeah. Yeah. Pete, I, I, I'm sure, you know, when you've, you've been around uh, agencies for a long time, you know, look back 20, 30 years ago versus 10 years ago versus a year ago, even um, how much things have evolved and the, the role specifically within that and the, the skill sets uh, are a little different now. Completely. Um, it used to be, uh, everything started with the, uh, positioning and understanding the customer. And that drove so much of the creative development that then turned into campaigns and turned into uh, broader, as we said, broad reach efforts. And the thing that I'm amazed at is the speed of response. Just a small example, I went online this morning to order something and found the product, ordered the volume I wanted, I had seven choices for the types of delivery speed from over $30 to 350, depending on how important it was. Made the decision, paid through PayPal. And then before I, almost before I completed it, um, I had three responses in my inbox. One was a thank you, one was a confirmation that it had been processed. And the other was waiting approval at the vendor that the order would be put through. And that's unprecedented. Um, it, it was never that way 10 years ago. And to have a team that can respond to that and understand it and then make good decisions tomorrow and next week and next month is so critical now in the marketing role that um, it's just a skill set that I don't think they, they even teach in college. Yeah, it's interesting because it, and you, you brought up something about sort of the paradigm flipping as well in terms of where you start. You know, back in the day, I was with Sherwin-Williams, Krylon, you know, we built a profile and said, this is who we wanted to be in the world. And then we just basically stamped, uh, you know, uh, everywhere we could on somebody's forehead, Krylon, 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 you know, yeah. you know, dry, 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 dry. And, you know, and everybody you could talk to, it was the same thing. And we were, this is what we want to tell you. And what you, I think what's is interesting with all this stuff flipping, the world of where you start has changed as well. And where, where marketers start is different. You now start at the end game and work backwards and figure out how to make the connection versus start where you think you want to. Now, I know you and I talked about all the time, nobody cares what we want to tell them. They care what they care about, right? We could, we could shout all day long. We want to be this, you know, tech and look at this, but if the consumer doesn't care, and I think that's part of the thing that's changing is you, you really need to think outward and work backwards now because, you know, they don't care. They, they want you to talk literally directly to them as a consumer. They don't care about their neighbor. They don't care about their brother. In fact, they probably don't want to buy what their brother buys. They want to buy what they want to buy. And that's changed the paradigm. I think it's interesting. So let's talk for a second just about that change and that shift. And I think we're all aware of it. Now let's put it on the marketing roles because we a couple of you mentioned it as well. The skill sets are different for that. Yep. You know, it's very different to be able to draft a story and build a message and build a profile. And here's how I'm going to implement it. I'm going to go out and we're going to sit in our ivory tower and create versus I need to go figure that out. And I need to do analytics to make it effective. And I need to figure out a strategy and work backwards. So the roles in terms of the companies and the way people are processing are very different, which I think is where so many agencies now are being successful because it's hard to find that 
new paradigm of experience to be able to do that stuff. Alex, what about, I mean, if you're going out and you're talking to people, are you hearing, um, you know, the people you're working with as you're going in and consulting, you're probably dealing with a lot of these people, right? And in, in terms of the marketing that they're doing? Um, to some extent. I mean, you know, the, the sector that I work, um, you know, um, it's a, you know, fairly specific set of skill sets and that's and so it's maybe less of of what what you are talking but there's some of that one of the things that i think is is interesting to to, to reflect on is um uh, there are two things actually one is that this democratization de democratization of of information um and just how how accessible all this information can be then you got to figure out what you can do with this so that's 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 one thing. The other thing that I think is the real challenge is, um, you know, how do you cut through the clutter? You know, because, you know, if if everyone is trying to sell you their one little thing or raise awareness, I mean, how much time do you spend just delete, 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 delete? You know, on your in your inbox, and and, you know, how do you cut through that? clutter is something I think is going to really be an important skill set to be able to offer. I'm going to cut through the clutter of the 100 emails so that you get the one that you actually care about. In a weird way, that's the thing that, that has never changed, right, in the marketing world it, versus TV before and radio and and paper, newspapers and magazine ads before. It was like you're bombarded by TV and you're bombarded by the by the newspaper and your bombard every other page in the news in a magazine so that technically hasn't changed that's one of the things that has stayed the same it's just shifted to digital clutter versus right, right. you know our us being out in the world clutter so yeah I, I, that's a good that's a good point yeah it's it's i think it's interesting and, and pete i don't know from an innovation standpoint you know again i think it's people the skill set in marketing is very different today when you know, when we were at Rubbermaid and, and Sherwin and when you were at our house, you, you, you had a product manager and you had a, a channel marketing person and you those were the roles, right? That's what you, right. the skill sets you need. Those people don't even know what you talk about anymore. They were like, huh, what, what is that? Yeah, what is that? Yeah, well, that, I can remember starting in the business. I worked in the creative department and I did ad paste ups and I used <laughs> exacto knives with glue and we put tissue paper over the layouts. And if anybody wrote on the original, we had to start all over again. And that, that's just archaic. The idea of creating film. You, Justin, you probably remember being there at eight o'clock at night, waiting for the typesetters to come in and the guys to bring the film in so you could do the reviews. So, so, many of that, so much of that is just gone forever. Yeah. Um, but what, what's really important is that within any organization, I think, Someone has to be the, not just the brand manager, but the positioning, the guru of positioning. They have to be responsible for the customer and what the customer is all about and what they're looking for, and then hold everybody accountable. Because okay. as Al was saying, it's so easy to just pump out voluminous content and hope something sticks when it didn't, we'll just send out 20, 30, 50, 100. And a good marketing team will zero in on the behavior of their customer and then what's really important, and Justin, you'll agree with this, it hasn't changed, is you need a writer and an art director that can put it together. I'm, I'm currently working on a campaign in front of me that I've been working on all day. And I was on the phone four or five times with my art director trying to figure out what's the headline, what's the graphic, what's the promise, and what's the call to action. Yeah. And that, that's some, some of the basics don't change. I've worked with so many clients um, in my consulting world, and, and a lot of people I talk to, at a peripheral level, at a, you know, just to kind of hear what they need and what their challenges are. And inevitably I hear people wasting so much money, whether it be with an agency or a team they work with. And it's be, they're like, oh, we've done this for six months. We've done this for a year. We've done this for 18 months. We're doing three ads a week and we're putting these posts out. And, we're, and I'm like, well, I know, but if it's not effective, it doesn't matter how much you do. And they're, they're wasting more money than they're being effective. Well, I'm like, you could I could, I'll tell you what, I'll save you like 70% of your spend and probably generate as much income as you're making today just by being a little bit better at what you're doing and a little bit more efficient at it. It's crazy. JP, I'm sure you see that all the time, you know, people coming from other agencies or other groups who didn't have that synergy and didn't have that, I guess, 
marketing strategy in mind and they're wasting a lot of money and they come to you and be like, well, we need to fix this. Right, right. Um, in a lot of cases, there's, there's sometimes not a metric of success. You know, it's, we'll, we'll have a client come in. I'll say, well, what's your return on ad spend? What do you want it to be? Right. Well, I don't know. Well, have you talked about the fix and the variable costs that go into that? So if I spend $5, do I get $35 or do I get $6? Yeah. Um, at some point, you, you know, it's, it's not profitable for you to your point, right? You are throwing ads out there and you're selling, but are you actually covering it to make, you know, to keep the lights on and do all those other things? Right. Um, but I, I think, you know, all the points that, that Alan and, and Pete have made are, are line up with, with what I'm, I'm seeing all, all the time. Um, and, and, you know, it's not easy to find that marketing generalist that knows all those pieces, right? It just doesn't really exist. Um, but what does exist is that if you can find someone that, that cares and is curious, we could teach you the rest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you don't care and you aren't curious, then I can't teach you one through five, much less all five at the same time. Hard to um, find today, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And then, and Pete, I thought you had a very good point to say, like, it, it's, it's nothing if you don't guide your agency or your stakeholders with any sort of narrative, um, because then it's just, well, I thought this was cool. Okay, but you're not the audience, right? Yeah. The audience is saying they want this. It has to come from that place. And then you let the art directors and the graphic designers and, you know, the sales guy, you know, get involved as long as it all points back to that piece. But from that general hub, right? If you don't care or aren't curious, then it, it's a it's you a tough go. road. It's yeah. a tough Alan, road. For sure. I would jump in and just add one thing. You know, coming from, you know, n- n- with no background whatsoever, and Justin knows knows me really well. You know, coming from no background in in marketing, whatever, and and learning it, and I I, I think I was curious and I did care, and so I, I you know I was able to to learn something. But one of the things I think one of the big opportunities are. Um, for from marketing professionals like yourself is that you know most you know if you take a big a large company you know they're going to have all the pieces and parts and they'll, they'll understand the brand management all that kind of stuff but but if you take sort of a, a normal mid sized company that's typically run by you know maybe an accountant you know maybe a technologist like myself you know there's really no real training and understanding of marketing. I mean, you know, what's the difference between sales and marketing? They don't know. I mean, and, and I think that the opportunity is that to c- convince those mid-sized companies, like what I had, that the value of it and what it can really mean, you, you know, if done right. And I, I just think that's a great opportunity because, because, it's just not, it's just not understood. I don't know how many times when you and I were working together, you know, when I first got there, it was like, well, we've hired agencies in the past. Yeah. JP, the, yeah. It was like, well, the R and D guy was the guy telling the agency what they wanted to do. Well, they're like, well, they weren't successful. Well, of course the, the input wasn't there to figure yeah. out the right output. So they were like, go figure it out for us with no direction, no goal. Or you have the, no CFO, or, or you have the CFO trying to dictate you know, what the messaging should be. I mean, it's just- And then the counter is, and we want A plus B equals C. Yeah. Now, not six months from now or three years from now, but we yeah. want that now. And it's just this weird dynamic. And I think that there's, there is definitely, it's a good point in terms of small to mid-sized companies who they need the roles to help guide the business, to help understand the, how it works, where it's effective, what the strategy is, how it rolls out versus the, all the, all the, I think, misnomers about what marketing is in, in, in the business world. You know, Justin, the other thing that I did a campaign uh, earlier this year, and we did all sorts of testing on the different, um, oh, this is one of my cats, mm-hmm. on the, on different um, platforms. And it was so enjoyable to test creative and test on Twitter and Facebook and Google and Instagram and hang the communications in each one of those platforms and instantly know what was working and then reorient spending and then focus and get immediate results. And um, JP, you probably go through that all the time. 
but as someone trying to help businesses that really don't have the expertise in that, they just sort of turn it over and say, tell us what we need and let us know how it works. And then you're feeding them daily reporting and daily success and making adjustments and moving forward. And that's, that's really rewarding, but you need, I think on your team, um, as Al was talking about, you really need someone who's gonna take that responsibility and grind it. Because yeah. it can be a grind when you're, when you're constantly posting and constantly measuring. If you don't have a support team that's been funded internally to not only spend the money, but do the analytics, um, it starts to fall apart and it gets to be a grind. Yeah, it's, I think it's it's interesting because there's you know a lot of people who have individual expertise in functional areas in marketing. I think there's a, a a gap in people who understand where that fits into the bigger structure and being able to educate management on, mm-hmm. look, this is what you're going to see, and this is kind of how this is going to unfold, and there's going to be ups and downs. I I worked with a couple of clients that after 30 days or 60 days on Amazon, they're like. Well, we spent our 10% on, you know, ad spend and we, we looked at the numbers and it didn't work. So we're shutting it down. I'm like in 60 days from, from scratch, from nothing, you're not going to suddenly win in 60 days. Like you, somebody needed to explain yeah. that to them and they, they didn't listen. Well, they didn't I, understand it. I think, I think you hit it right there. It, it, in, at least in, in our role here, it's all about expectation management. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would, um, you know, whether it's working with a president, director of sales, or a marketing person, or even an entry level person, right? They have to then answer to someone to say, what do I expect after 30, 60, 90, six months, a year? And if you could say, well, if we do all these things, we believe you'd be able to do, you know, X, Y, and Z, and then you, you kind of get there. But then sometimes it's like, well, I don't know, we decided to work with these guys, and they say that they know what they're doing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give them a bunch of money. And uh, they'll come back to us with their pot of gold. And, and it's, it's in our responsibility as, as account people and marketers ourselves to say, like, I'm, I'm happy to do that, but I, I need some, some give and take from you. And I need to set the expectation that if we put this up there, here's how it's going to perform. And, and we got to stand behind those metrics, too. I think in some cases, it could be scary to, to put your name out there and say, you know, after three, four months, here's the expectation and then not hit it. And then feel like, okay, well, it's a fail. But what did you learn over those three, four months that'll help impact the next quarter and the next quarter? And you do need to have someone on, on um, whether internal stakeholders or client side um, folks that can just say, yeah, we're with you. We understand the plan that you're doing. And, and you know, hopefully they don't cancel within you know, that 60 day time period. Yeah, I think it's, I really think it's a challenge for, for companies today, especially smaller ones, because it's hard to find those people that, that, I want to say can know it all. You, you can't necessarily at a $10 million company or a $15 million company hire six marketing people, you know, a digital specialist and an analyst and a, you know, a PR person and a product manager. And, and so there's, there's this really, I think, unique challenge in, that companies have today that are, how do you find the right mix of people in different size companies that are able to outsource, guide, or do stuff internally by being good at a couple of different things and being a jack of a couple of couple of things that this that particular company needs. And that's a hard person to find a lot because strategy, business acumen, digital asset management, um, strat, um, online versus you know direct consumer, all those things need to come into play. And, and a lot of times small companies don't have the ability to hire multiple people. So it's how do you yeah. navigate all that with the roles out there today? Yeah. And, and, you know, um, from our experience with Justin, I mean, we were pretty specific about, I, I remember we had these conversations where we, where we said, look, we can't span all those sets. So we were very deliberate and intentional about what we were going to, going to go, go get on the outside. But I think that the, one of the things that you really have to have in all this, what Peter said, um, I think at the C level that there has to be interest to learn and 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 if you and if you don't have that forget it I, I think it's it's and what i would i would challenge you know you know marketing um uh folks um to to you know to really put a lot of energy and effort into communicating 
to folks that are just technologists, you know, that are doing new codes and 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 stuff like that. Because I think that that there's just this gap of not really understanding what marketing does, you know, and and I, I think it, it, there's just tremendous opportunity to explain that. Um, yeah, I, th I think I would say that if you look over the past and I've been doing this for 30 years myself, I would say in 30 years, nothing has changed in marketing. And I know that pe people look at me when I say that and they're like, you're okay, you've lost your mind, you're just wrong. But the reality is, is that who are you going after? How are you connecting? What's your story? Breaking through the clutter? You know, How are you spending your budget? The core of what marketing is, is not changed. What's changed is, the mediums and the connection to the market um, uh, in terms of what, what do you, how are you, how closely connected to the consumer and how quickly do you get data? Other than that, a lot of the core stuff is, hasn't changed. But the problem is, is all this data now is at our access and how you interpret that and how a marketing person manages that, I think is, is a humongous challenge. And that to me is the number one dynamic that is adjusting what people are able to do and the roles in marketing for businesses. It's just the data management of it all. And just a small point for anybody that might be watching this, it's a little bit younger. Um, we were always taught to get in the marketplace and actually talk to other human beings. Mm. And I know that sounds silly, but there's marketing people that never leave their cubicle. They never venture outside. They've never been to a focus group or been to a grocery store to watch people and observe them shop or in a paint store to see how they interact with the color chips. And for anybody that wants to understand a little bit what we're talking about, the data is great, but to actually have a conversation with somebody and find out what it's all about, what they're trying to accomplish for themselves and for their family and their life is very, very different. And how just say the younger generation loves to hide behind the data and the numbers and tell me how many click-throughs happened last week and how many of this, how many of that. I say to them, well, what did the customer actually say? Oh, I never followed up on that. You know, so, we sold our products in, in a lot of uh, big box retail and I would routinely go to, uh, you know, to Walmart and, watch. Target <laughs> and, and just hang around and watch yeah. how you know, when a person would see our, our product on the shelf or whatever, and how they would engage. One of the things that was kind of effective for us was that, um, you know, we would have field trips um, where someone from sales and marketing would take, you know, the R, an R&D group to, you know, Walmart and, and data chip aisle, my favorite spot. Yeah, yeah. And show them, show them, okay, here's how we merchandise. Here's why this is important. Here's what's not important, you know. And I think that that is very helpful. That's the kind of 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 really important to to communicate to the organization that marketing is not, you know, you don't want to be thrown into the to the just it's just overhead. So the, you know budgets get tight. Whack at marketing. I mean, and and so you you're constantly. So I grew to appreciate marketing a, a lot. And I wasn't in that camp. I mean, uh, at all. I mean, I had to learn, I mean, um, how important it, it, it was yeah. and is. Yeah, and J JP, I, I'm sure you see it all the time. You know, you guys have amazing resources at Thunder Tech, right? I mean, you, you really have a lot of amazing talent and different, different groups who have, have specific skill sets. But narrow all that down to your point person working with your customer and the executive. And they're like, no, I don't care. I just want this. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, but, but what, what we talk to our team uh, of account people and, and managers as well is, is think like a marketer, right? Clients going to come to you and say, I want this. And you have to say, okay, before you say yes or no, for that matter, what, what can you bring to the table that will either, change their mind, have them think about something um, and, and present the options, right? Even bad options are options. Yeah. Um, and in a lot of cases, people just want to know, like, I had this idea, you know, the more entrepreneurial the client, the more 
wild and zany the ideas could be, right? But how can you take all that energy and say like, hey, you, you talked about this, but I thought this was actually really good and take that piece of it. And all of a sudden that thing becomes something that's trackable, measurable and, and provides some value, right? What you don't want to do is say, nah, that's, that's too crazy. And then you just kind of leave it there because I think every idea, every little part there has some marketing influence that you can grab from it. it are you open enough to take it and pull those pieces out? Um, th those are, I think, what, what a lot of our clients are looking for um, from us. So if they want a yes person, they could go to a freelancer and you know get that tomorrow. Um, but hopefully we're able to, to have those discussions um, and, and sort of bring that, that creativity out of those, those thoughts. And I think that partnership with agencies like yourself and Pete and Al, as far as consulting, as we as we look at things in terms of working with businesses today, I think it's going to become more common to be able to reach out and partner with groups and teams that are adding value without adding overhead and bringing expertise and a vision and a strategy because small companies can't always afford those things. And, and, I, and the, nice, the nice thing about the, the, you know, when you look at the digital marketing, I mean, you know, because it's so um, numbers driven, you know, you can get more creative in the deal structure. Uh, you know, the, right. the, you know there's, a, there's a retainer, it's this amount, and there's a success fee because you can really tie it towards. And those things resonate. I can say that, particularly for small companies. I mean, you know. Yeah, buying buying into uh, to profits and goals and dri driven by um, fees, driven by things like that, I think are showing that partnership and showing those um, unique ways to work together. That that that's that is changing a little bit. It never was like that before. It used to be to pay me my retainer and I'll do my work and we'll you know we'll shake hands when it's done. But if you don't like it, you just don't hire me again <laughs> for the for the next round. So let, let me do this. Let me start. Let me go to a, a question I thought I think would be a little bit of fun here. So let me ask each one of you uh, what each one of your favorite marketing role titles has ever been or your favorite crazy marketing project has been. So I'll give you a choice of one of those two questions. I'll start with mine. I, I worked with a company one time who was seven million dollars. And they actually had a chief experience officer was the only marketing person in the whole company. Wow. No experience whatsoever in product management, market strategy, or digital. They were a chief experience officer, and they were the only marketing person in the entire company. I, it blew me away. I said, it is so cliche. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pete, let's start with you. What, what, either a marketing title or, um, or project you've worked on? Well, you had asked me earlier, you know, did you ever come across a project that didn't quite pan out? And back in the agency days, and this goes way back, but it's a story that I heard I thought was pretty funny. We were helping a company launch this new device called a microwave oven. <laughs> and it was this thing that could heat up your food, but it used these invisible rays inside. And the chairman of the agency talked to the corporation and all the brand managers to pool all their money and they ran one commercial on the show called 60 Minutes, which was the highest rated show in the country. And the problem was prior to the commercial running, they did a four minute segment on Three Mile Island ah. and the, the radiation effect of, um, <laughs> of nuclear power plants and all that. So this incredible thing broke on the news followed by, hey, get your new microwave oven. So right. needless to say, uh, we got a phone call the next morning and lost the business. <laughs> yeah, terrible marketing strategy. Terrible marketing oh, strategy. Well. <laughs> but it is a true story. It's a true story. JP, what I about mean, you? I don't know. I kind of wish I could give Pete a hug. I mean, that's that seems like <laughs> a pretty big drop off there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, mine is not nearly as, as um, uh, exciting as that, but... Um, you know, we, we had a, um, a company come to us and they wanted to basically, they were uh, a house of brands and they wanted to um, basically come to us and say, we want to move all online. You know, I've got, I've got this brand that does this, I've got that brand that does that, and we all sell it individually now, but we also sell in retail locations. We sell, you know, to, to independent dealers and we want to put them all online. So we got it. We made the site. They had 50,000 SKUs, got it all up and running. 
pushed it live and nothing happened. They didn't sell anything. Um, you know, they, it was hard to find some things. And back to our original discussion, we had built the engine, the system, right? But there was no gas. There was no narrative. There was no, you know, big thing that someone can, why is this better? Why is this easier? You know, I can go down to the store and talk to Jim and he'd tell me what I need to, you know, put together this project, right? So why would I go to here, right? It, it didn't tell the story, but man, that was, it was quite the, the experience, quite the technology component to build with a lot of different APIs and, and syncing of systems and fulfillment and, you know, all that fantastic stuff. It felt great about it. <laughs> right, right. And, and, and you know, the, the system eventually, you know, went by the wayside with some new management and other stakeholders, but um, it, was, it was quite uh, the scenario that, that I felt could have played out differently if they had that story and narrative. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's that sinking feeling. You hit the go button. Everybody feels great. You've asked your grandmother and your aunt, and your neighbor, what, what are you doing? I love it. You know, and then it goes live and nobody's buying anything. Hey, my, my neighbor loved this thing. What That's right. Oh, That's we right. We're good. And, and, and that was during the time too, when, when responsive websites were, were kind of new. So that's, you know, desktop, mobile, tablet, all in one site, you know? Yeah. So it was, it was a lot of sort of, you know, pieces coming together, right? Frictionless e-commerce, you know, you can have one site, you didn't have to have a mobile app, anything, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and unfortunately it didn't work out. Yeah. Oh, uh, I've been there. I've, and I've, done, <laughs> I've done a bunch of those. I'm going to kind of like take that one off for a second. I've been there before. Uh-huh. Yep. Now, what about you? I'll have to seed my time <laughs> to, to, to Peter and or JP. I, I don't think I have many. Uh, I'm trying to think of, of train wrecks that I've been a part of. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Um, but I have, I'll seed my time to, to, to these gentlemen on, on that because I can't think of anything. Like that. Well, so let me talk. We've got about 10 minutes left. Let me, let me ask one last question of the group. And um, I think it'll be an interesting um, to see your guys' response. So take out the companies, the, the fortune 100 companies and the big, big guys. And, you know, let's, let's focus on, you know, hundred million dollars and below companies. Um, if you had to recommend, you were talking to a CEO or an executive in a company and they said, look, we're, we're going to redo our marketing team and we're going to start from a white sheet of paper. How should I build this? What should I start with? What should I do? How would you guys answer that question? And, and just, you know, I think there's probably a few a few things that tie in. So, let, let, Pete, let me ask. Start with you with that. Yeah, I'd I'd say absolutely critical would be to hire the most experienced um, content management person you can find, uh, using the internet for communications and all the different platforms. It continues to multiply and perform every six months. Uh, to run a business without it, to be able to not only be responsible for positioning the product and launching it, but to track it and tie it back in that whole sales loop. I've seen many companies and I've been part of many companies that will make huge investments. Um, I can remember when I worked at the law firm, we purchased Salesforce and it was gonna be this be all end all platform that would integrate every single one of the attorneys and all of their efforts and all of their lines of business they're re responsible for and all their marketing activity and everything. And it collapsed because the attorneys were working 90 hours a week. And when they would come back from the trade show or come back from the sales thing, they would come into my office and dump a package of business cards on my lap and say, these are the people I talk to, do whatever the hell that thing is that you guys do mm -hmm. so I can get credit for being at the event. And it just collapsed. And all the Salesforce is an amazing platform and companies that use it properly can really, really find great success with it. But smaller companies often may read an article, a CEO or a marketing person will read an article and say, gee, this is the next thing that we need to adopt. And they don't have the team to implement it. Yeah. And JP, I'm sure you see that quite a bit on your time because you're, you're called upon to be the integration artists put it all together for us and make it operate yeah that that's absolutely right pete i mean um we've we've seen 400 million dollar companies have one marketing person right um we've seen 10 12 million dollar companies have five people 
right? So I was like, well, uh, obviously one values marketing more than another, or they don't call it marketing. And, you know, they let some other people do it 10% of their day. And, you know, that that's good enough. Um, but I think that the key word for all these systems is adoption, right? Pete, the Salesforce story I've heard a million times. Yeah, we yeah. bought Salesforce and it was six figures and it's great and it's going to do awesome. And then no one does anything with it or one person does it and everyone else just dumps all their work on them. And, you know, in the $400 million company example, it's like, I don't have time to enter all your business cards, <laughs> you know, cause I'm only working on marketing 10% of the time. Um, so, you know, I, I would echo um, Pete and in, in terms of the, the, the content um, side of things. Um, if you understand the content component, you understand the story and the message um, that you're looking to do. And then it's about how do you um, sort of pluck the um, uh, calls to action from either people or processes or systems um, to make that work. Um, you know, it's, it's, as I mentioned before, it's, it's increasingly hard to find someone that is that adept at all the, the marketing things that a director needs to, you know, be at this point. How do you understand the brand at its core and then say, okay, I've, I've heard some things about account-based marketing. I've heard some things about, you know, CRM integration. Uh, how do I, you know, take the best parts of those and focus on that for the next six months or a year and then, and then kind of make that, that dream happen? Because you, you're right. You, you try to do 5% of all the things you hear, you're really not going to get a finished product. You'll probably just be frustrated. Yeah, I, I think the one challenge to that is when people hear content management, I would argue if you went to a CEO, you know, Al, back in the day, if somebody said, go hire a content management person, you would, you'd hire an analyst, right? You'd hire a, a data guy. And, and I think the thing that the only nuance I would put on, and I agree with both you guys, that's where I would start as well. But I think one of the things that I would make sure of is not necessarily content management on the digital analytics side, more as the strategist side. Because I think somebody with a content management strategy background versus a content management nuts and bolts guy is going to give you the functional vision versus the tactical execution of things. And I, so many times, I, and I've watched this with a lot of companies, they're hiring these content management people and they're like, oh, well, I ran this program and I ran this, this data and I, I analyzed this and which is all super important. But the thing they miss is they don't understand where it fits into the, the strategy and the plan and how to uh, put the umbrella over all that. So I, I agree with that, Pete and, and GP, I, all the things you said, just making sure that if I told somebody to do that, I would, I would look at somebody from the strategy content side versus the, the tactical analytics side of things, because I think those get mixed up. We hired somebody at, a, at my, the last company, Al, you, you were there to do Amazon and tactically they understood everything there was to do and go into the system and manage the day-to-day -day things on Amazon, but no strategy or vision or, or um, understanding what, what we're trying to do with Amazon and how it works. And all, but they knew how to do all the Amazon, their background and the, the tactical digit number stuff was great. So it's just, I, I agree with that, but I think that's one nuance I would but Al, I would, I would change. Um, Al, listen, you, you've been there, man. You've been the, I, I don't know anything. Yeah. I, yeah. So, uh, yeah, let me, so my schedule is really you know, different you know. because, because, um, you know, I don't, you know, know that the various marketing titles, all that specifically. So, but I can tell you having hired, <laughs> you know, those people, you know, to me, the, 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 the single most important thing is um, the, 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 character traits of whoever I'm hiring to be that lead marketing person. And, and the, I can tell you what I would, what I look for and what I would look for. And the, the, the most important trait is, you know, I was running a fast moving innovation based business, fast growing, with a lot of stuff going on. What I needed was a person who could come in and to help to educate me and the leadership team of which that person was a part of the leadership team on the ups and downs and the, and the do's and the, and the don'ts. And, and what was important in that is, is patience. That person had to be patient, but the worst thing that they couldn't have would be this, well, you guys just don't know anything about marketing. So, you know, go sit in the corner and color 
and I'll do it. And, and, and that doesn't work. You know, that doesn't work. It just is, it's dead on arrival. And then you get the, the approach of, well, you know, just giving the answer in several months and blah, 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 or you're done. The other thing you want to avoid is, uh, is, you know, again, I'm speaking from the perspective of, of the company that I ran is you can't, you know, what the, the death knell was the person that would come. You don't want a person coming and saying, what's my budget? You know, <laughs> your budget's zero and, and it's not, but, 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 you know, a lot of times from the external perspective, it's the, the impression that you get looking from the outside into the inwards of marketing is it's a cost center. It's, it's basically give me the dollar amount that I get how I can spend that much money. <laughs> yeah. And don't bother me, you know, and, and it just doesn't work that way. And that was the, 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 the that was the sign of, of, of d- death. And so my point is, is that I was looking for character traits and I think that that's, that's important. And again, I'm thinking, I'm just thinking about it from a pragmatic standpoint of what I thought was necessary in this, in those roles. Yeah, so that's yeah. my two cents, Justin. No, it's all, it's all really good. I, I, I think it's, um, in a weird way, it's more complicated than ever. You know, it really is um, more than ever. It's more nuanced than it's ever been. Because yeah. I, I also would argue with, with, I agree with what all you guys said. It also it depends on the business and the company and the strategy, um, you know, because it, there's a lot of different ways to, create a marketing team and JP you mentioned it sometimes it was one person running a you know a couple hundred million dollar business and other times it was a 10 million dollar business with five people so I do think it, it's a little bit nuanced in terms of there's no one right way to do it it depends on the makeup of the company and what everybody does and how you sort of build the team you know I was at Sherwin Williams and I was running a 400 million dollar piece of business pretty much by myself but I had a lot of money and a lot of teams like yourselves to, to work with. So you know, that's one way to do it. And it's about partnerships and alignments and, you know, factoring out outside resources versus inside and spend. On the other hand, you know, um, we, we did it all at uh, how we created a, a marketing team with seven or eight people. And, and, you know, we did graphics and strategy and digital and website and all that stuff in house. So I think there's, it's, it's a little bit nuanced today in terms of how you do it. I think the big question for any company is, do you want to do it through external partnerships or do you want to try and do it all in-house or do you want to do a hybrid? And I think if you start with that question, then you can kind of start to build out the team and how you're going to go do things to, to some degree. Great. Well, listen, we're, uh, we're at a little, we're at 55 minutes here. So we got a couple minutes. Let me see if there's any questions in the chat room uh, that we can quickly answer. Um, Pat, thank you for uh, um, all the, the feedback today. Well, I appreciate the uh, the attendance and the and the feedback of of and input with everything. No no major questions are in the chat. So, uh, any closing comments from anybody uh, that they'd like to uh, to pass on? I would love to have uh, one of you all join one of my. Uh one of my panels around innovation businesses and a bunch of stuff like that. I'd love to hear your input and you to know, educate some of the folks that I talk to all the time. Sure. That'd be fun. Yeah, absolutely. We'll Justin, wait. Justin gets 10%. I'll, I'll yes. wave my hundred thousand dollar finders fee and we'll go. Right. Yeah. Well, listen, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> I know this is, um, you know, a topic we've all come at it from different angles, but I think, uh, like I said, the, it seems like a lot of similarities and, perspectives that overlap a lot. So it's been a lot of fun to, to have the discussion with you guys. I appreciate you taking a little time out of your, out of your afternoons to, uh, to attend and provide amazing input. We'll get this uh, up on the AMA uh, Northeast Ohio website and uh, it'll live forever in lore. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Good seeing yeah. you guys. Thanks, appreciate nice it. You all. My pleasure. Okay. Take Thank care you. everyone.